Good morning, guys. Happy Tuesday and welcome to story time. Yesterday, we had a lot of rain and it's supposed to only um, keep raining throughout this week. So I thought it would be fun to read some books about rain. The first one I have for you is called Come On Rain. It is by Karen Hess and illustrated by John J. Muth. Come on, Rain, I say, squinting into the endless heat. Mama lifts a listless vine and sighs. Three weeks and not a drop, she says, sagging over her parched plants. The sound of a heavy truck rumbles past. Uneasy, Mama looks over to me. Is that thunder, Tessie, she asks. Mama hates thunder. I climb up the steps for a better look. It's just a truck, Mama, I say. I am sizzling like a hot potato. I ask Mama, may I put on my bathing suit? Absolutely not, Mama says, frowning under her straw hat. You'll burn all day out in the sun. Up and down the block, cats pant. Heat wavers off tar patches in the broiling alleyway. Miss Grace and Miss Vera bend, tending beds of drooping lupines. Not a sign of my friends, Liz or Rosemary. Not a peep from my pal, Jackie Joyce. I stare out over rooftops, past chimneys, into the way off distance. And that's when I see it coming. Clouds rolling in, gray clouds, bunched and bulging under a purple sky. A creeper of hope circles round my bones. Come on, Rain, I whisper. Quietly, while Mama weeds, I cross the crackling dry path past Miss Glick's window, glancing inside as I hurry by. Miss Glick's needle sticks on her phonograph, playing the same notes over and over in the dim, stuffy cave of her room. The smell of hot tar and garbage bullies the air as I climb the steps to Jackie Joyce's porch. Jackie Joyce, I breathe, pressing my nose against her screen. Jackie Joyce comes to the door. Her long legs, like two brown string beans, sprout from her shorts. It's going to rain, I whisper. Put on your suit and come straight over. Slick with sweat, I run back home and slip up the steps past Mama. She is nearly senseless in the sizzling heat, kneeling over the hot rump of a melon. In the kitchen, I pour iced tea to the top of a tall glass. I aim a spoonful of sugar into my mouth, then a second into the drink. Got you some tea, Mama, I say, pulling her inside the house. Mama sinks into a kitchen chair and sweeps off her hat. Sweat trickles down her neck and wets the front of her dress and under her arms. Mama presses the ice chilled glass against her skin. Aren't you something, Tessie, she says. I nod smartly. Rain's coming, Mama, I say. Mama turns to the window and sniffs. It's about time, she murmurs. Jackie Joyce in her bathing suit knocks at the door and I let her in. Jackie Joyce has her suit on, Mama. May I wear mine too? I hold my breath, waiting. A breeze blows the thin curtains into the kitchen, then sucks them back against the screen again. Is there thunder? Mama asks. No thunder, I say. Is there lightning? Mama asks. No lightning, Jackie Joyce says. You stay where I can find you, Mama says. We will, I say. Go on then, Mama says, lifting the glass to her lips to take a sip. Come on, Rain, I cheer, peeling out of my clothes and into my suit while Jackie Joyce runs to get Liz and Rosemary. We meet in the alleyway. All the insects have gone still. Trees sway under a swollen sky. The wind grows bold and bolder. And just like that, 
rain comes. The first drops plop down big, making dust dance all around us. Jackie Joyce chases Ro Rosemary, who chases Liz, who chases me. Wet slicking our arms and legs, we splash up the block, squealing and whooping in the streaming rain. We make such a racket, Miss Glick rushes out on her porch. Miss Grace and Miss Vera come next, and then comes Mama. They run from their kitchens and skid to a stop. Leaning over their rails, they turn to each other, a smile spread wide from porch to porch with a wordless nod. First one, then all. Fling off their shoes, skim off their hose, tossing their streamers of stockings over their shoulders. Our bare-legged mamas dancing down the steps and join us in the fresh, clean rain while the music from Miss Glick's phonograph shimmies and sparkles and streaks like night lightning. I hug mama hard and she hugs me back. The rain has made us new. As the clouds move off, I trace the drips on mama's face. Everywhere, everyone, everything, in misty limbs springing back to life. We sure did get a soaking, mama, I say, as we head home, purely soothed, fresh as dew, turning toward the first sweet rays of the sun. The end. Our next book is called Home in the Rain, and it is by Bob Graham. It hit the highway. Oop, sorry. Don't think that's the beginning. Okay, that is the beginning. Didn't it rain? It hit the highway, bucketing down on Francie and her mom and her baby sister on their way home from grandma's. It rained on endless lines of cars and buses, oil tankers and trucks, the windshield wipers in despair. Shoo, shoo, shoo. But the rain was going nowhere except down. Francie, mom, and baby sister a long way from home. A big rig passed on a long haul trip headed for heaven knows where. It rocked them in road spray and washed them up into the picnic area. Above the highway, it rained on the hill and a baby rabbit dived for cover. It rained on a field mouse, wet and confused in the blackberries and lucky too, because 300 feet up, a kestrel had lost sight of its prey. It rained on the canal, turning the water white, and it rained on the fishermen, wet as the fish below. Young Marcus, water running down his neck, his fingers smelling of bait, wished he were somewhere else, while the water ran off the backs of ducks. The rain soaked two men on the Western Highway interchange. They argued while, street, while steam rose, rose from their hot engines. And not looking where it was going, the countryside ran straight into the edge of the highway, bringing it with the faint smell of farmyards. Francie, mom, and baby sister, such a long way from home. Inside Francie's car, the fog moved in. She wrote her name in her breath on the side of the window. She wrote her mom's name with her finger squeaking on the glass and then her dad's name. Her dad, working far out to sea, gone three weeks now. She wrote it clear across the front window. My little sister, what will her name be, mommy? Well, she's not quite with us yet, said mom. But when will she have a name, mommy, said Francie. Soon, said mom, sometime soon. Francie saw a whole back window just waiting for a name. A window just waiting for Francie's wet finger. Could it be Alice, maybe? Or Isabel, Emma, or um, Zoe? 
Well, they're nice, Francie, said Mom, but there's a name somewhere out there that will fit her just right. They ate the picnic Grandma had packed, plum jam sandwiches and hard-boiled eggs with a little sprinkle of salt. They shared the two stale toffees found under old parking tickets in the door. When is Daddy coming home, said Francie. Soon, replied Mom, sometime soon. Like the new baby then, said Francie, and felt a small movement against her ear. Well, yes, said Mom, brushing crumbs from her knees, like the new baby. Then the radio played. This is 3LFM, your spot on the radio. It's wet on the road, so you take care, folks. Francie and her mom and her baby sister pulled back out into the traffic. Far off down the road, they found a service station. Hail hit the roof and oil on the puddles made rainbows around Francie's toes. What was about to happen would not be noticed by anyone. Not by Sam Miller feeding his dog fried chicken legs. Not by Kate Calder losing her sour fruity fizzes from a hole in her pocket. Not even by a seagull who is eating them. Perhaps it was something unremarkable, not to be seen by strangers passing in the rain, for it was just a mom lost in thought and a small girl dancing. Francie, come here, said mom. Grace, your new sister, we'll call her Grace. And mom hugged Francie as best as she could with Francie's sister Grace in between the three of them. They staggered and toppled a bit, did a slow and awkward little dance of their own until Francie's feet found the ground again. Francie had a feeling. She knew right here with the smell of gasoline and her feet all wet on the pavement in the rain that she would remember this moment forever. Wait until daddy hears, said Francie. Daddy will love that, replied mom. And way back down the highway, Francie's grandma sipped tea. Rabbits and field mice were deep in their burrows. Young Marcus headed home for a hot bath and somewhere kestrel chicks went without dinner. Then the sun covered the countryside, far off and away from grandma's place, to home and out across the sea. Their little car, now full of courage, bumped off down the road. The windows rolled down and wind rushing through. One window was still fogged up. It had Francie's fading breath and Grace still faintly showing. The end. That was cute. All right, I hope you guys are enjoying the little bit of rain we are having and I will see you guys on Thursday. Bye.